Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'll just give a little update about what we've got on today. Um, hopefully we've got the guys from Biogas Products coming in and doing the, some of the remaining work here. Um, over the last few months, this has collected water in the bottom. Little bubbles of gas have pulled up, so Effie and Johnny had to just get in there and push the gas out, which isn't a great sign, I have to say. It probably means that we've got some kind of reaction happening down beneath this surface. Uh, we did lay it with, there was some digestate in there, old digestate and then we laid clay we scooped it all out if you remember and laid clay on top so i thought that it would um, not react uh, that it wouldn't bubble up um, but it did so we'll just have to you know keep an eye on that uh, they're coming today to fix their remaining ropes and then they're going to start putting concrete blocks in the bottom um, so they can put down their gas bubbling system which will be um, connected up to a uh, gas compressor which will then agitate the mixture in there. Uh, so we'll do away with our stirrers uh, that we've laid down somewhere over there beyond the um, shipping container structure that we've been putting up. And um, that, uh, that I think will be a better system. I, I, won't, I never really liked the stirrers. They were good, but it did mean you've got to cut through the bag and this will just have a plate with pipes going into it um, we'll be able to monitor the, the, the gas compressor, which will look, I imagine, pretty similar to our existing gas uh, bubbling system, which is in the tank. So I think it will be a better system long term. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what we've got. Uh, that thing, the, the old heat exchanger, we can take out. And we'll put a new heat exchanger, which will be um, an external one um, going through. Uh, a double jacket heat system. So yeah, we're just waiting for them to turn up and then we'll get going. Warm, is it? Yeah. <laughs> it's actually a pretty mild day, isn't it? Despite, despite being quite sort of blustery, really. Right, so there we are on the bottom. You see the gas bubbling points. Right there, each of these is going to have one on. There's one down there. Quite heavy duty gas bubbling all across the bottom of the bag. Mm. I'm taking this apart. So I've cut through the old. Uh, pipes that used to go to the old heating system They're pretty badly blocked up with crud when I cut through it's all full of this kind of nonsense in there so just cut through it with the circular saw um, bolt at the back took it off and we're going to reuse this concrete plinth for the gas bubbling system that we've got going in for this new system so that's the sort of finished amount we'll have some pipes coming up the side there. We'll go to a plate on that. And that's where the gas bubble will sit on that old concrete plinth. So yeah, there we go. The guys are here, they're putting the blocks down, which is where the pipe, uh, they've got a coil of blue pipe with some sort of holes in it. They're gonna sit on those blocks and the bubbling will happen uh, all around the, the new bag uh, as the agitation method. So. As I said, we'll get away from those stirrers and um, yeah, we'll see how they get on today. Hey right, guys, I'm just at a sale in Sutton Scotney. Um, I got to get this grain pusher onto my log truck and I don't know if it's going to go. It's looking a little bit tight, but we'll see what we can do. Um, I just thought it'd be quite useful. We got a long grain pusher and having a slightly shorter one like that, which is only three meters long as opposed to the other one's sort of five or six, will just enable us to push up the grain just 
a little bit more flexible and also on the logs. <coughs> Good news is it also comes on pin and cone, which is handy because um, we haven't, well, it's just not many people seem to have pin and cone and it's just a pain to get adjusted. So that was a nice, uh, nice little buy, I thought that one. And I picked up from the, uh, the auction also there. Chains are on the farm, uh, which is, uh, Still farm boss, so if you can see that, let's just see if I can get it flip round. So there she is. I'll tell you one thing, the, the chain's nice and sharp. I actually can't get it to start, but it might be that. Just have a quick look, make sure the spark plug is uh, not oiled up or anything simple like that. Give it a little bit of TLC and I think she'll be all right. You can't beat the old stuff. Okay, so that pusher, we tried to put a 90 degrees in there, but it just wasn't happy. So I'm going to take off one of the boards, which I have done, and we'll see if we can get it in like it is at the moment and flick it over the end here. So uh, yeah, we'll see if we can do that. It'll sort of slightly stick out one side um, and we'll see if that works. Now I was at another farm sale the other day uh, over in Suffolk, just on Suffolk Cambridge border. And um, it's really interesting. I was speaking to the old guy, he was 82, and I actually picked up a static home, which is obviously his boss's. Uh, oh, here's my straps, one second. Okay guys, she's on. She is just kind of poking out a little bit here, but I don't think too excessively. And perhaps a little touch at the back, just uh, six inches or so. So I'm quite pleased that I managed to get on the truck and not have to come down for another load. Uh, but yeah, there we are. Anyway, as I was saying, at a farm sale the other day and he said all the kit was going off to Eastern Europe the combine was going to Ukraine and the trailers were going to Poland this chap here said most of it's sticking in the UK but when I came in there was one Polish lorry picking up a grain trailer so yeah there you go a bit of a sad bit sad when you see these farm sales seem to be going through a lot and the kit going abroad but there we are maybe that's just it's just the policy I suppose at the moment um, young people don't want to come in and <coughs> people are selling up and taking the money before they get taxed I suppose on the inheritance um, so yeah there we go anyway back to the yard So guys, I'll just throw up a little video on the static home there. Um, it's got a couple of bedrooms, it's got a shower, it's got a toilet. I can maybe get all those plugged in. If anybody needs someone to stay overnight, if they get trapped or something, that's available. Um, and the shower, I think, will be useful for the lads. Uh, nice little seating area too. I took an underside video of it um, to send to the haulier because he was like... Uh, it's been in the field, it's going to be wrecked. As soon as I get on the trailer, it's going to fall to pieces, the window's going to blow in. But I took that video, it sent it to me, and he said, oh, actually, it's all right. So um, there we are. I only paid 100 quid for it, but anybody buying a static has to be careful because the hauling cost of that is like about 1,400 quid. Uh, so I think I've probably made a bit of an error getting it in one way. Uh, but it's going to be a lot nicer because the lads at the moment are just sitting in a shipping container no windows or anything so this has got little sofa and, and what have you so uh, and a cooker it's got heating sink etc if we can get the water plugged in so i think it's what the lads need just a little bit more of a sort of salubrious environment so to speak so we got the pusher back in the yard here so that's quite handy 
it is about half the size of our normal pusher which we use to push up all the wood chipping here um so i think that'll be quite quite a neat little bit there um what else did i get uh, some rolls so i'm going to show you the rolls that we picked up um and also got a still farm boss saw uh 38 um which i think is a good one one of the ones made in germany um so before they went to china and sold out um so i think that'll be a nice little useful bit of kit for the boys down at the ad plant who have to come up here to the wood yard and borrow saws and then it's like someone's touched my saw so i'm trying to give everyone their own saw um so there we are guys um i'll have to do an update on the wood we've just got uh a curtain cider in so we're doing our first commercial order on bags of wood so i'll try and do a little video on that and what we're doing with uh the saw there the saw there and other bits and pieces something else i also picked up was a sheet it wasn't at this farm sale uh, down in this is at Sutton Scotney or something. Uh, there was one the week before when I picked that up. So pretty similar place in Hampshire, um, and it's a sheet for some of the Bailey trailers. So I thought that might be quite handy if we ever do logs into our Bailey trailers or into any of these skips. Some of them didn't come with sheets, so um, good tops are expensive. Um, so there we go, guys. So that's the weight of the um, rolls. Um, and we can roll them off now and see what the weight of the tractor is. On the plate? On the tractor? Huh? Well, I don't know. Put it right. 740, and you were in it when I weighed you before, so that's 100 kilograms. <laughs> <laughs> so there are the rolls from Vardastad. Um, they're a little bit worn out, I've got to say. But they did a bit of rolling. These should be a bit more prominent. Here are some of the newer ones here. And those are the ones, so there's quite a bit of a difference there, really. Uh, a lot more sort of depth where they've replaced them. Uh, but they folded out very nicely. And um, we got them all the way back from Hampshire to here. So, yeah, they didn't look too bad. Nice little set of reserves if these are our our normal ones they're only six meters uh, there's a lot more depth on these i've got to say um but if this ever broke or anything just gives us a little bit of a reserve um so yeah there we are the final little item that i purchased was this um which is a 550 80 um it's done a fair few hours over ten thousand ten and a half thousand um we had taken the headstock off um, to get pin and cone for us. But I quite like the machine, actually. And, um, yeah, she's a bit rough inside. There's a bit of rust because uh, I think she was loading muck. And that's obviously corroded things. So let me just flip the camera. So you can see some of that rusting is a bit, a bit heavy duty on it. Um, but seat looks okay. Uh, it's the old school, so it's got um, it's got these dials and knobs or whatever, which I much prefer over the the electrics. I actually prefer these ones as well, um, and the, the the hook there for lowering up and down the hook. I think it's better, better system. But they went away from it. Um, so yeah, everything is sort of more analog in the machine, which I think is pretty good. Um, so yeah, that was just below, just below 10,000, 11,000 I should say. So that's good. Um, great big boom, really nice chunky tires. They've still got quite a bit of life left on them. Um, doesn't seem to leak too much. Um, you know, we've got, Farm has one of these style machines, not not a five-ton but a four-ton lift and um, 
yeah, I just think, you know, some of these old school ones are actually pretty good. Uh, it's got a socking great big back end when you compare it to the other machines. Much higher. Um, I'm going to use this just for the wood chip area. So for loading wood chip, then the AD plant's got its machine and the firewood's got its. And then you don't get any contamination of product because often if the AD plant is loading wood chip, they'll bring load wood chip down in here that gets into the plant and the pumps can get wrecked by a bit of wood chip going through them. Uh, or you can have logs go into wood chip and that upsets obviously boilers. So that's the theory, the thinking behind the theory. Um, <laughs> we'll see if it works, but you know, just now we're down, a, we've got two machines, one of them, uh, one of them's off collecting logs. We need a third for screening because we're moving something else. The amount of telehandlers I think we need is just absolutely mad. Uh, we're just moving a new saw into place and that's all, that all takes up lift capacity basically. So um, yeah, there we are. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that uh, that vid. Uh, if you did, uh, yeah, keep liking and subscribing as it helps the channel and helps me bring you more content. So um, yeah, I'll see you next time.